Hello everybody, Andrea Trask here with Dental Tutoring. Let's talk about the first signs, I guess the first clinical signs of um, gingival um, disease. So gingivitis. So what does it start to look like in the early stages? And as a new student or even a new um, dental hygienist or a new dental assistant, this might be a little bit hard for you to determine because you think that everything looks either healthy or not healthy, but it's a little bit harder to determine if it's in the early stages or the more advanced. So think of your early stages of gingival disease as just pretty much the gums look a lot larger. They're likely a dark pink or a red at this point. They do not have to look so red where it's like, whoa, like something's happening there because I have seen it where their gums to me actually look healthy. They are a darker pink maybe, but that could be normal for that person. So I don't necessarily think the color means that things aren't healthy because somebody could have a dark pink look to it, but then as soon as you go to clean their teeth, their gums are bleeding everywhere. So then that tells you that, okay, um, gingivitis is happening here. Things look okay from the outside, but as soon as you started cleaning the teeth, or probing or polishing, just things just start bleeding everywhere. And then that tells you and the patient that things aren't as healthy as it could be. But typically the gums do look more red, but again, they don't have to, it depends on the person. And if you're new at this, a dark pink and a red may look almost the same. When I was a student, this was hard for me because I never felt that people's gums looked red necessarily unless it was really, really obvious. So if it's harder for you to, to determine the color, that's okay. The next things um, to look for are, are the gums looking pretty shiny? Because if they look shiny, that's actually not healthy. If they're puffy, that's not healthy. If the gums are bleeding, that's not healthy either. Those are kind of the main things to look at. Um, Think of the outside of an orange peel, okay? If the gums are stippled, that's, pr that's pretty healthy. That's how you want them to look. But I have seen it where the gums are stippled, but they're also red. So red means not healthy. So then you might be saying, okay, so if the gums are stippled, they're healthy. If it's red, it's not healthy, but the patient has red stipple gums. So which is it? So they're, they're obviously not healthy if the gums are that red or if they're bleeding. So you might have to look at a couple other things. Always ask the patient if their gums bleed when they're brushing or flossing. If they're flossing, then obviously they have to be doing it more. And that's why the gums are bleeding because they're not healthy. But if the gums are bleeding as they're brushing, then they're really not healthy because that's not normal at all for the gums to bleed when they're brushing because that's that's a pretty hard thing to do meaning their gums have to be very unhealthy for that to happen if the gums are bleeding when they're flossing yes things aren't healthy but that's more normal than if the gums are bleeding when they're brushing because when i have a patient tell me that the gums are bleeding when they're brushing i think uh oh like you must have a lot happening there when I start to clean your teeth, they will probably bleed everywhere. It's going to be harder to see. It's going to take me longer. There's probably a lot of plaque and tartar underneath the gum lines. Like I think all, all kinds of things. But when I hear that the gums are bleeding when the patient's flossing, well, I just simply say, it's probably because you need to floss more. And if you ask the questions, the patients will usually say to you, well, I haven't been flossing for months. I just started flossing last night. So I kind of expected the gums to bleed. And that makes sense because even after you clean the teeth, um, tell the patient, of course, um, to floss every day. But also let them know that if they floss every day, the gums will still bleed probably for a good week or two because the gums have to get used to it. So make sure to tell them that because if you don't tell them that, then they might start to floss and then they might say, oh, wow, the gums are bleeding, so I'm going to stop flossing. But you don't want that. You want them to keep up with it. Because if they have um, gingivitis of any kind, the best thing to do is to floss because that's where it starts, is in between the teeth. And even if they brush five times a day, if they're not flossing, then that will not help them. It helps them, but it won't completely cure um, the gingivitis. And the nice thing about that, though, is that if they're brushing and flossing, it takes maybe two weeks or so, and then things are perfect again. 
things are healthy, but they have to keep up with it. So that's the nice thing about that is you can actually show them, you know, show them that their gums are bleeding a lot, but let them know that if you start to floss every day, this won't happen. But then also tell them it's not normal. It's not a good thing for their gums to bleed. If they're, if they had a cut on their arm and it started to bleed, they would be concerned, right? Yet a lot of patients aren't concerned when it's bleeding inside the mouth, but that's not a good thing. So let them know that that's not healthy, it's not a good thing, but it's also curable. But if they leave it alone, then things can get a lot worse. And then their um, gingivitis can advance to periodontitis, and then they have, have other issues, things can become painful, they can start to lose um, bone around the teeth and nobody wants to hear that. So I will always say that. And they will go, oh my gosh, I don't want that to happen, but that's how it happens. So if they're not paying attention, if they're not brushing and flossing properly, then that's what can happen. So start them off simple. Um, try to be firm, obviously, but not mean, because if you're yelling at the patients, then that's not that will not help them, right? And then they're not going to brush and floss to begin with. If your patient's flossing maybe say once a month, then it might be hard for them to floss every day, but start them off small. Say, well, you do have to floss. Um, every day is ideal, but let's do it at least four times a week to start. And if you notice that that's not helping, then please do it every single day, okay? They will likely notice that it's not helping, but then that's putting onus on them that they have to pay attention to if their gums are getting healthy or not. So that's what I like to do is to put the onus on them too. But let them know that it can be curable. It's just they have to work at it at home. So simply having their teeth cleaned isn't enough. They have to work on it at home. So then that way their gingivitis does not advance into perio. So I hope this helped you guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next one.